What's going on, you two? So, I hope you and your family and loved ones are stay are safe and sound. Some bullshit happened this morning. Went to work, and then they told us that we were off. The class was canceled. Some BS. We don't get paid. And I hope to God I don't go to this other place because I'm banned from that place, which is retarded. I won't go into it. But we basically went to work, and then we got turned back around with zero updates. That's how my life is. That's how our job is. It's crazy. So we're back in when Boxing Hype Jobs Face Reality Part 2. The first time it was with uh, uh, um, the Part 1 with Boxing Legends channel. This is Part 2. So without further ado, let's react to that. Welcome back to the rise and fall of Boxing Hype Jobs. The series where we showcase some of boxing's biggest wasted talents while also digging up some of the more humorous media hyped fighters that fans would like to forget about. If I can build up Peter's record, I can cash him in on a big money fight. Today, we'll be picking up from where we left off in part one by displaying some short bios I on can tell boxing's that last biggest hype jobs. And all to the Prince haters, man. You're gonna have to learn to love me. So I'm gonna be in this industry for a long time. I'll be making a lot of money in the industry. I just want to say a quick thanks for the support you guys have been showing the channel over the last few months. It's been incredible, and honestly, the sole reason why I keep making videos. I appreciate it wholeheartedly. <laughs> yeah, he's still on the ropes. <laughs> First up, we have the relatively short-lived internet-famous career of Britain's most hated bantamweight, Prince Patel. You're a young stud like me. You've never seen that. You've never met a stud in the person in flesh. You've never met someone with that sort of power, that sort of hand speed, that brings that extra something to the game. The reason why the flyweight division is going to be talking about because of me. If you have never heard of Patel, don't be alarmed or question your dedication to the sport. The only people that have heard of him are the followers of the YouTube boxing interview channel, IFL TV. Uh, do you recognize that you're interviewing a great one? It was here that Patel made a name for himself as hands down the most arrogant and cocky prospect in the Every time you guys do an interview, they this were some of that Prince Patel ratings. With the amount he talks, you would presume he could back it up, right? Well, he is still undefeated at the time of this video's release, but hilariously already had a draw on his resume to a guy with a record of three wins and five losses. Not exactly the stuff made of the face of British boxing. Just like that. Prince Patel is going to become the face of British boxing. What? Everything <laughs> seemed like the loser at first, but then Patel was given the opportunity to feature on Box Nation's TV show, Bunce's Boxing Hour. I'm on the show because I'm the future of this industry, Barry. Um, not Barry, Steve. Steve. Uh, but yeah, I'm the future of this industry, and um, I draw ratings. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary to begin with. Patel was being an arrogant a-hole as usual, but then he lowered his standards even more by verbally attacking the former world champion, co-host Barry yeah, Jones. You don't want to be in, in fights like Barry where no one wants to watch you, and the crowd ain't, ain't even interested well, in you. Bar Barry had massive uh, ratings. Was a, we put down thousands. But, but he's, not well, he's, not, he's, not, he's not really remembered, though, as a, as a great champion. No one, no one goes Barry Jones. Let's, let's talk about Barry. He's, he's an incredible fighter. He's a forgotten champion. But he's in the record books. He won he, the same title won, that Oscar De La Hoya won. Yeah. He won it. And, he won it on pay-per-view. And, and he couldn't keep it. The reason, the reason why... Well, look at me. But perhaps it's a bit of jealousy. <laughs> Prince will probably be watching this and thinking about those yeah. ratings he likes to talk about. He ain't no Prince that's in hot man, he'll never will be. Prince of Town is hot as funny as shit. Because he is impossible to work with. He now fights over in Hungary against the lowest I wouldn't worry him either. David Rodriguez. Finally an American asshole. <laughs> yeah. heavyweight prospect David Nino Rodriguez seemed to be doing everything right while on his come no, come on no. now during the late 90s and early 2000s but 10 years later he was still doing just that fighting guys that you were supposed to fight in your first couple years as a pro because of this Rodriguez built up a huge record of 36 and 0 with 34 knockouts and what comes with a record like that you guessed it yeah 
<laughs> it is bad. Look at the reaction. What the hell? Might not be to the same level as other guys in this series, but I remember it personally, and it definitely existed amongst heavyweight boxing fans. <laughs> of course, as the series suggests, everything came crashing down once he met the first. He spat right out of his face. Why? His chest. Darnell Wilson might not have the best looking record out there, but this man could crack. His infamous KO of Emmanuel Loto in 2007 proves that. If you thought that was a good deal, left hands are white though. Let's finish up Rodriguez. Rodriguez has never lost. 36 and 0 in his career. Turn him right. Rodriguez. While doing some research for this video, I realized Rodriguez was actually a really nice guy. I guess he just found out his level much later than normal, and unfortunately for him, in the most brutal way possible. He's not over. He just fights over. Peter McNeely wasn't your average type job. He was a man forced down the fan's throat as a potential banana skin for the long-awaited return of Iron Mike Tyson. So what he does is he starts building up his record against guys with little or no boxing ability. Guys with no skills. And I got about he had power. Four years later, Peter's 36 and 1. 36 and 1. Before Tyson, he had already taken to the ring 37 times, winning 36 and most by early knockout. And he went right after it, dropped him. A minute 53 of the first round. It was a sad sight to watch back and edit the fight footage of his career, as 99% of the opponents he faced had lost more fights than they had won. This has to be the most fabricated resume of recent times. Literally, his best opponent was Lorenzo Boyd, who had a record of 18 wins and 21 losses, and was on a 10-fight losing streak. Still, the hype got to McNeely's head, and he went into the Tyson fight truly believing he was the man to end the Tyson dream. I'm Hurricane Peter McNeely! This Tyson was all cops. On Saturday night, watch me kick Tyson's ass. The fight hilariously took place on the pay-per-view platform, and to this day still stands as the Tyson is so irritated. <laughs> Was it worth the money? Well, you be the judge. <laughs> so he's been working a great deal on his business for the past few months, and here we go. And McNeely, as advertised, comes right at Mike Tyson. Fight proved two things. Tyson was good enough to be competing at a much higher level, and McNeely wasn't good enough to lace a champion's gloves, let alone Tyson's. Ozzy Harrison, he's British. Just like in part one, we have another story which is more sad than it is humorous. Trust me, Audley Harrison, November the fame, is the new. Heavyweight champion of the world, no doubt. Today, he is revered for being one of the worst heavyweight contenders of recent times. But things didn't always look so bleak for the six foot six heavyweight, Audley Harrison. To so achieve that goal was a momentous occasion. As an amateur, he was just about as good as they come. He's an ABA Commonwealth and Olympic champion. In doing so, he beat some of the very best amateurs in the current scene. Boxing pundit Steve Bunce once said he had never seen a British boxer win an Olympic medal as convincingly as Audley did. That's a praise of its highest order. Surely, things were going to be great in the pros. Well, it started off by himself. His head dribbled off the canvas. I don't think many people were expecting Audley to become an ATG, but I don't think many were expecting this either. And this. Baby, hey. And then this. Damn, son. By standing up. And then, well, you get the point. Audley's career crumbled, and his great amateur potential mounted up to nothing but a laughing stock in the pros. His name is also the of losing failure. He's a joke, and I can't allow someone like that to, you know, drag me down. 
He hung the gloves up for good in 2013 after Deontay Wilder pummeled him in the first round. And Boston had the best music. I could make an entire video of legendary fighter sons not filling their father's boots. There have literally been hundreds, but for me, none were quite as hyped as Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. I'm not saying that. I'd be surprised, I'd be surprised if Canelo does the job on him that the Canelo army thinks he's going to do. His father, Chavez Sr., was one of the greatest champions of the last 30 years. It took 90 professional fights before he finally suffered a defeat, and during that time, he went through multiple weight divisions and dominated some of the very best boxers in the world. Is one blip on his resume, however. For the first 45 fights, he did nothing but beat very low tier fighters in his home nation of Mexico, but later showed the world he wasn't just a cherry picking pipe job and dominated the American scene soon after. Chavez wants to end this with a knockout. His son also tried this technique as he built up a record of 47 0 before facing a top opponent. You can probably guess he was then beaten and convincingly at that. Look at that. Martinez rips him with eight straight shots. Blood flowing again from the nose and the mouth of Chavez Jr. Chavez showed a lot of heart and fighting spirit in his career, but is still a massive disappointment to the Mexican people. His father was one of, if not the greatest sporting hero in their country's history, and his son turned out to be nothing but a non-committed, non-focused hype job. Of course we see That's just depressing as hell. Chavez went on to lose again to Andrew Farrar and Saul Canelo <clears throat> Alvarez, where in both cases he put up nothing short of a pathetic display. The efforts of Canelo Alvarez, and it was a very accomplished performance. He's won it by streets. I was going by a street, you know, and it could be a shut up. If you enjoyed this video today, please help us out by hitting that like button. Part 3 will be uploaded very soon. No, and if you don't want to make sure you're subscribed with the notification setting switched on. Until next time, Fight Fans, this is Boxing Legends TV, signing off. 36 and all his career. He's not over. He just starts over. Alas, mm. so many factions to choose from. But which one should I join? No, this crap. When bosses get taken to school. So that was pretty interesting. Um, what was that last guy's name? That the, he thought Ali Harrison was just... Trust me, it's at times. But things didn't always look amateur. He was just about as good as they come. He's an ADA Commonwealth and a world champion. In doing so, he beat some of the very best amateurs in the current scene. Boxing pundit Steve Bunce once said he had never seen a British boxer win an Olympic medal as Steve convincingly Bunce. as Audrey did. That's a praise of its highest order. Surely. One more, one more scene and I'll be done. Blowing again from the nose. Look at that. Good to 47 and 0 before facing a top opponent. Chavez was garbage, man. Yes, he was then beaten and convincingly at that. Look at that. Martinez rips him with eight straight shots. Blood flowing again from the nose and the mouth of Chavez Jr. Chavez showed a lot of heart and fighting spirit in his. Ah, oh, some bull crap. Anyway, those were Boston Hype Jobs Who Face Reality Part 2. <clears throat> the funniest one was there, Rodriguez. <laughs> he spat in the guy on the guy's chest. I mean, he had the bucket right there. Oh, the arrogance and insolence. That's so ridiculous. I mean, that was too good. Oh, man, he got poetic justice at that end. And that was pretty funny. Anyway, I don't like it. <laughs> he just literally spat on him. And, um, <laughs> but the music from Boston Legends, I gotta say, is the best, man. If you wanna know what that music is, let me know. Give me video suggestions. Version 994. Um, this is my channel. Leave a like and a sub if you do enjoy more from this content. And give me video suggestions, like I said before. That was Boston Legends. High Dodge Face Reality Part 2. If it's funnier, I'm gonna react to more content like this. And with all that being said, I am out of here.